in this lecture we are going to talk about septic shock which is basically a widespread infection in the body now so far we have discussed different stages and different types of shock and this is now the final type of shock which we are discussing purely from physiology point of view purely from physiology point of view so basically uh, we are just going to discuss that how um, septic shock occurs and uh, what are the basic features we will not go into the investigations and treatment now septic shock as we discussed is basically a widespread infection in the body in which the germs the infection is basically borne through the blood and it spreads uh, to different tissues of the body and it then uh, releases different uh, mediators which causes it causes uh, a lot of features now basically septic shock it can uh, come from any uh, focus so basically it can start as a peritonitis suppose for example any uh, infection of the intestine has led to uh, infection of the peritoneum peritonitis now this can spread through uh, through blood into the whole uh, of the body now septic shock can start from kidney infections or urinary tract infection or the infection in the kidneys or the infection in the peritoneum it can spread throughout the body now similarly a local rupture in the skin local skin rep rupture can cause disseminated infection now see here we have shown one thing uh, uh, we have uh, like drawn a diagram in which we have shown something that a, a nail is uh, basically uh, rupturing the skin now what happens is that bacteria gets introduced into the body and it causes basically tissue damage in different areas of the body but the problem is that the problem in septic shock is that infection starts in one area suppose for example infection may start here with this local skin rupture with the nail or infection can start from the uh, peritoneum the peritonitis or in the kidney or anywhere in the body but it will spread through the blood and it will involve multiple system now that is basically the main importance of septic shock and initially initially the shock will not be there initially there will be no shock initially there will be only bacteria or infection in the blood then they will go to the tissue and they will start releasing different inflammatory mediators they will start releasing different inflammatory mediators in different parts they will also start releasing different cytokines now there are a hell of cytokines and a lot of inflammatory mediators which are basically responsible for different actions in the body some are basically beneficial and some will cause harm but they basically are released in infection and inflammatory processes now what happens in septic shock the inflammatory markers the inflammatory mediators the cytokines which normally are released um, in the septic shock in the sepsis basically they most of the time causes vasodilation they release such inflammatory markers which basically causes vasodilation blood vessels which are basically coming from the heart to different areas of the body they get dilated now this is something which we have discussed in anaphylactic shock which we have uh, discussed in hypovolemic shock which we have discussed in um, neurogenic shock that the, the the tone of the blood vessels may be lost or the vasodilators they may start dilating now suppose for example if this was the blood vessel initially it will become this much dilated now due to dilation of the blood vessels every time the blood dilates uh, the blood vessels dilate especially the veins blood starts pooling in them blood starts pooling in them when but blood starts pooling in blood vessels in dilated vessels it is very difficult for the blood to come back to the heart it is very difficult rather it starts um, pooling in the tissues and in the blood vessels so the inflammatory markers the uh, the inflammatory mediators the cytokines that are released from the bacteria or uh, in which are released during the inflammatory process that is started by the bacteria or any germs they most of the time lead to vasodilation and there is increased vascular permeability there is increased vascular permeability now what happens is that in vascular permeability normally if the fluid is not allowed in this condition there will be a lot of fluid coming out into the tissue in a lot of fluid will be coming out of the tissue now this is something which we discussed in anaphylactic shock as well in our previous lectures and what happens is that due to permeability of the vas uh, vessels there is tissue there is fluid oozing out of the capillaries which basically decreases the the amount of fluid the amount of blood volume that is available for circulation so the amount of blood volume available for the circulation basically decreases due to dilation of the blood vessels in which causes pooling and due to oozing of the uh, fluid into the tissue now septic shock will have a lot of features now as we discussed that initially there will be no shock initially this there may be just an inflammatory response and depending upon the level of severity the severity some of the patients may never develop shock septic shock is the end stage of sepsis initially there is an inflammatory response then there is sepsis and finally there is shock now that is a very big topic that is a very big, big topic from critical care point of view uh, which needs um, which is which we cannot cover in this small lecture but try to understand that when initially bacteria are uh, introduced into the body initially some due to some uh, inflammatory mediators and cytokines there is some inflammatory response now during this condition a lot of features a lot of signs symptoms can be present in the patient now starting from here if there is an injury here so due to the injury of the nail uh, 
at this point local cellulitis can occur local cellulitis can occur infection can start at this very point locally this infection can spread through the lymph nodes and it can cause infection of the lymphatic vessels which is called lymphangitis these lymph nodes uh, these uh, yeah, this infection can go into different uh, lymph nodes and there they can cause enlarged lymph nodes or lymphadenopathy but the hallmark of the septic shock is low blood pressure low blood pressure the hallmark of the septic shock is low blood pressure there will be low blood pressure in sepsis or in the initial inf infection process in the initial inflammatory process the blood pressure may may be normal because blood pressure decreases only when due to the inflammatory mediators and due to cytokines there is vasodilation and there is increased vascular permeability which leads to the pooling of blood in the enlarged blood vessels and which leads to basically oozing out of fluid due to which the amount of fluid in the circulation decreases venous return decreases the cardiac output decreases um, or um, uh, arterial pressure falls so due to which the low blood pressure can occur now uh, some patients may have headache and delirium some patients uh, or most of the patients or most of the patients will have increased synthesis of acute phase reactants most of the patients will have increased synthesis of acute phase reactants like ferritin then uh, most of the patients will have fewer flushing and they will have increased respiratory rate now depending upon the predominant system involved we discussed that sepsis can start from one area it can start in the peritoneum from peritonitis from the kidney kidney infection or from the skin so if it starts from the skin most uh, prominent feature will be cellulitis if it starts from the uh, lungs respiratory rate will be very much high if it starts from the uh, any other area if it starts from any organ now initial symptoms of the patients will be related uh, will be involving especially that, that organ from where the spread of infection started now the heart rate and the cardiac output can even increase the heart rate and cardiac output can even increase and the important thing is that in septic shock in septic shock there is high metabolism there is high metabolism and you see the low there is low blood pressure but there is high metabolism due to which there may be initially high cardiac output the heart may ultimately fail the cardiac output may ultimately fall but there is high metabolism due to the toxins and due to which there is high heart rate or there is increased heart rate there is increased heart rate and increased cardiac output it may even uh, at some point uh, decrease but most uh, some most of the endotoxin they basically increases the metabolism so increase in metabolism along with pooling of blood along with uh, uh, fluid filtering out of the blood vessels it puts a lot of burden on, on the heart so the the heart has to cope with this demand due to which the heart rate in the cardiac output initially increases to keep the uh, blood pressure normal but when things are out of control then the blood pressure ultimately falls now there may be increased production of neutrophils and these neutrophils are basically responsible for the production of some of the inflammatory mediators and some of the cytokines now there are a lot of other inflammatory uh, cells or the white blood cells which release the uh, which releases the inflammatory mediators and cytokines but from the bone marrow there is a lot of production of uh, neutrophils so it is also um, basically an uh, an investigation to do uh, in septic patient now there is a lot of production of a lot of glucocorticoids and catecholamines there is production of glucocorticoids and catecholamines now in sepsis patient there is increased metabolism to cope with this metabolism there is basically stress on the body so to cope with the stress the adrenals basically release in a lot of glucocorticoids and catecholamines which basically helps the body to get out of the stress now in the inflammatory process in the blood vessels due to sluggish movement of blood due to pooling due to dilation and due to inflammatory process there is sluggish slow movement of the blood which leads to the formation of clots which leads to the formation of clots and when clots are formed when clots are formed the clotting factors are consumed so this leads to consumption coagulopathy and there is consumption of the clotting factor now this thing can be uh, confirmed with the help of platelet uh, time uh, prothrombin time sorry uh, pt aptt and uh, inr now this condition when a lot of clots starts forming in different areas of the body this condition is known as dic disseminated intravascular coagulation disseminated intravascular coagulation and due to consumption of a lot of clotting factor so a lot of clots are being formed in the blood vessels so clotting factors are consumed here when clotting factors are consumed it also leads to hemorrhage in different parts or in different tissues in different organs so these are different uh, features of the septic shock
and septic shock basically it originates from one organ it may start uh, from peritonitis or urinary tract infection or kidney infection or local skin infection then it may cause disseminated infection that infection from one point may spread into the whole of the body bacteria will be introduced in that uh, specific tissue and there will be tissue damage due to which there will be release of inflammatory mediators and cytokines and those cytokines will specifically act on the blood vessels and cause increased vas vasodilation the blood vessels will dilate and their permeability will increase both the factors will basically lead to low blood pressure but apart from low blood low blood pressure there can be a lot of features in the sept in the shock or sepsis in septic shock or sepsis which may include uh, local features like cellulitis lymphangitis enlarged nodes headache delirium increased synthesis of acute phase uh, proteins and uh, fever flushing uh, increased respiratory rate increased heart rate increased cardiac output increased production of neutrophils and then increased release of glucocorticoids and catecholamines increased metabolism due to endotoxins then clots formation and dic and consumption of clot clotting factor ultimately uh, leading to uh, hemorrhage as well so that's all about septic shock that's not all about the septic shock but this that's all about septic shock from physiology point of view well if you consider it from medicine and pathology point of view then there are a lot of things a lot of things a lot of clinical criteria how to diagnose it a lot of investigations and there are a lot of treatment options so it can uh, one small lecture is not sufficient to cover septic shock but to give an idea about the septic shock it is just the uh, spread of infection from one focus in the whole of the body which basically leads to uh, ultimately in the end leads to uh, shock and that shock is basically known as septic shock thanks a lot for watching the video